freaking coach on the on the staff, every player better wake up and start start understanding where we're at. Have some personal pride. Have a freaking sense sense of urgency. Know where we're at. Have some pride into who we're playing for and why we do this. And uh, and then and then go find a way to win as a team. That's my challenge to every single person in that building this week. Is that. And and so uh, yesterday was flat out embarrassing. Um, and and uh, our guys know it. That, I'm not telling you something they don't know. They know it. But that performance yesterday um, is uh, is ridiculous and, and, and can't happen. And, and obviously that starts with me. Matt Nagy not happy as he should be right. with the team's performance on Sunday night against the Green Bay Packers. And look, this is the Bears team we have seen for the last five weeks. They started 5-1. and one. It felt like it was a lot of smoke. It was a lot of mirrors. It was right. a house of cards, and the house of cards has collapsed the past five weeks. Their offense stinks regardless of who's playing quarterback. That's right. The issues are too many to fix on the fly. That was something that Nagy alluded to several weeks ago when they lost to the Rams on a Monday night when their defense scored more than their offense. Defense 7, offense 3. You can't just make your offensive line better like that. No. You can't get rid of this guy and replace him with this guy. Who do you replace him with? There's nobody out there. Right. You just have to keep trying to make chicken salad, and sometimes you realize that your efforts just end up in chicken stuff everywhere. Yeah. On every one. Right. And that's where the Bears currently are, and I, 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 I don't. Look, I, I think he's venting his frustrations, and there's not much he can do at this point. But, you know, the 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 Vince Lombardi, what the hell's going on out here speech doesn't work in today's NFL because uh, you either have it or you don't, and the Bears don't. And you're not going to all of a sudden find it the last five weeks of the season. No, I, you're right about that. You're not, and especially on the offensive side of the ball. But I think the one thing that he's talking about more than anything is, like, come on. No, there, there, the, there was lack of effort, lack of physicality, and just emotion, like intensity. We we didn't see that from the Bears at all on Sunday night. I think that's really what bothered him. You know, the defense, the way they got pushed around in the run game, and Rodgers just surgically destroyed them. You know, we haven't seen that from them all year long. That's the first time we saw the defense kind of asleep at the wheel. I'm sure that really bothered him a lot. You know, Matt Nagy, yeah. I hate his offense. I don't know what he what to say it. I think it's a bad offense. I like him in a lot of ways as a head coach. I do think he's a good communicator. I know people that know him. I know the players there like him and all those type of things. The, they have one big issue. I just wish he would be a head coach if he does get to keep his job after the year. Head coach, and you got to hire an offensive coordinator. Like a real offensive coordinator, not somebody that you know or is your buddy who has the same ideas as you but totally different approach to your football team and your offense. And that is, yes, not going to be fixed to your point right now, and they're just going to have to deal with what they got for now. I don't know that he's going to get that choice. I know, right? I don't know he's going to have that opportunity. I don't know Do what's going to happen after this season. I don't know what's fair. I know. Anymore. 12 I, and look, 4 I, and 8 and 8, and now we're sitting here at 5 and 6, and I know, but it's it's you know that's, that's a tough one to me. I don't know where I feel about that. Well, and because, and, you know, yeah, I just I, I don't know because with some of these teams, I'm not sure who's making the decisions. And with some of That's these the teams, problem. you've got a, a team president like a Ted Phillips, who is always insulated, who is never scrutinized. We talked about that over the weekend at PFT. There was an item that Rod Wood, the president and CEO of the Lions, isn't going anywhere. How many chances do you get as the person who can say, I don't have anything to do with football? when things are going wrong, but find a way to take credit when things are going well. That yeah. drives general managers and coaches crazy. But that's the best job to have in a football organization, number one, because it pays pretty damn well. And number two, you can easily jump under the bed when the owner is mad about the team sucking. And uh, then when it's time to make big changes, it's the president that ultimately is heavily involved in the search process and the selection process. And at some point the president fails enough times in hiring people who can turn things around that the president has to go. So yeah. that's one of the dynamics in Chicago. What does Ted Phillips want? And does Ted Phillips believe he's got left in his 
bag of equity, another opportunity to say we're going to hit the reset button here in Chicago. So I, I, I don't know what's fair or what isn't fair, but, uh, you know, to be five and one and have it all fall apart, uh, that, that, that leaves a mark and that doesn't look good. And uh, this year, the dynamics of the pandemic could save the Bears. I think some of these teams have made their moves early yeah. in the offseason or during the season, so they'll have more of an opportunity in the offseason to make their hires. Um, I don't know. Maybe the fact that they were 5-1, and one, maybe that gives them another right? chance. I, I don't just, know. I don't know, but they need a quarterback. Yeah, they need that's, a quarterback. What that's what's going to be It's not done. Nick Foles, and it's not Mitchell Trubisky. No, you're right. It's not those two need a new offense. You know, and I hear, you know, listen, I, I talk on Chicago stuff all the time out there in the regional sports network with NBC and all that type of stuff. I mean, yeah, it seems like it, this is one I would really think about if I'm – president owner of the bears whatever about i'm not going to rush to a decision because there are things again even with ryan pace and the bears i know mitchell trubisky they messed up he messed that up watson and mahomes are way better it's he, he really messed that up but you know the rest of the team i don't look at the players and just go oh it's horrible the defense is a super bowl defense the offense with Allen Robinson and Anthony Miller and Cole Komet and Jimmy Graham and some of those guys, I mean, it's respectable. That's good. So, yeah, the offensive line's got its issues. There's there. So, that to me, that's where it's the, 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 the debate lies. It just where, like you're saying, where's the blame fall? Are we going to be able to fix some of these things in the offseason? Will Matt Nagy be open to, hey, no more offense for you. You got to bring in somebody totally new. I think those are the conversations Chicago Brass would, would have to have with that group there to see where they go. He was the coach of the year two years right. ago, right. which should count for something. And yeah. they were five and one. And, you know, maybe he's making the best batch of chicken salad that he can with right. the ingredients that have been given to him. But I'm not a big advocate of firing the GM and keeping the head coach because then you get everyone off schedule and right. the GM's waiting for the chance to hire his coach. And then you get a situation like in Detroit where after two years you get rid of Jim Caldwell, you bring in Matt Patricia, and Patricia can never live up to Caldwell. Why'd you get rid of Caldwell? That never goes away. It's, it's very difficult to have current coach, new GM. I can't think of a time where that's worked and worked well, where the two come together because the GM always has ideas as to who he wants to bring in as his head coach. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.